Hi everyone! Welcome to Ayana's Musings and Happy New Year! I hope you had a blast during your New Year celebration and let's all welcome a prosperous and wonderful and at the same time healthy 2022. So today I will be discussing about my CFO experience especially or this only applies if you are flying out from the Philippines or you're technically a Filipino or Filipina applying for a K-1 visa. And so let's check it out! All right, so step one is to first create an account on their website. So their website is cfo.gov.ph, but I'll also link that in the description box below. Um, for the information of everyone, and if you have checked my previous video, I applied for my CS CFO immediately after I finished my interview or um, my interview for the K-1 visa just so I'd be sure that I would definitely get it on time. Um, even if you're not yet visa on hand, you can already book an appointment with them to have your telecounseling. So after you've created um, an account on their website, next is that you will receive an email. So in my case, I receive an email right away after completing my account and ask certain requirements for me to submit to them. All right, so the requirements that was asked for me, and it should be a generated email, and that was um, my valid passport, a valid visa of or visa grant notice, a petitioner's passport, and marriage certificate if, again, you're married. So they would send this to you and would tell you to submit this required documents prior to telecounseling to your assigned uh, facilitator's email address. So after you have confirmed your email and after um, creating that account, they would reply to you. And there should be inside that email a specific address and that's your assigned facilitator for your telecounseling. So you have to send all these to that um, counselor's email. So on my end, I received that email on the same day. And then I waited for about four days. So on May 10, 2021, I requested a schedule for telecounseling and attached the required documents. I waited because I have to gather um, the documents that they have asked for me. So, but if you have watched my previous video, again, you would know that I requested CFO after my interview. So technically, I did not have my visa on hand yet, and that's okay. You can get your telecounseling ahead even if you don't have your visa. So what I attached in the email and requested for a schedule was my valid passport, my U.S. Embassy Manila interview notification schedule, my NBC letter, and my petitioner's passport. And then on the same day, uh, the counselor assigned to me replied and acknowledged my email and at the same time scheduled the interview. All right, so actually after she replied to me on the same day when I scheduled and I mean emailed her and asked for a schedule, she scheduled the interview the day after. So that was May 11 at 4 p.m. And so I waited for the entire day until it's about 4 p.m. And I think I called her promptly, but I did that around two minutes before 4 p.m. So how was the interview or no, telecounseling experience? So. I called her at first in the number that she provided in the email and it turns out it was so difficult to reach out to. So in my first attempt, hindi nagdering. Second attempt, um, it got cancelled out. So I was kind of freaking out for a bit. And then my instinct told me is to send her an email immediately because she might be waiting for me when she's on her laptop because it's still a working day. Um, and so she replied immediately and she said her phone was not ringing. And so I tried ringing it again, but she said she is not receiving it. And and then she said she her location might be a dead spot. And since her internet was working, we tried, I tried to reach out to her Viber account. And luckily and finally, I was able to go through. So um, it went well and she's super nice. The few questions that she asked was um, how did we meet and then how old is he and 
then um, what what is his work and so I explain about that his an active duty military and then so after like those basics not really basic but you know the foundation of the question basically because you're a K1 um, visa applicant so it's really about you know your your fiance and all the remaining questions I can't really like say it as it is because it would just be a follow-up or just a question based from your responses so I would say overall it took about around 20 to 30 so I say I would say 30 minutes and really it's just like talking to an old friend so but along you're just really talking to someone um, that asking about your relationship and curious about your love life so you can answer in English or Tagalog in my case I was lucky enough that she's from Davao um, because it turns out for since this is, this is a telecounseling they're trying to tap the different uh, locations of C CFO so they could accommodate everyone so you might um, have an assigned facilitator from CFO Manila or other places but for me she was from Davao CFO Davao and she, obviously she speaks um, Bisaya so there were times where for the most part I spoke in Bisaya and then English and then so overall experience it was great and you just have to be genuine about answering the question because at the end of the day it's just you who would answer who knows the correct answer of all her questions because it's just really about your relationship so after that i was advised to send her um, to send through her email the remaining documents that i need to send so she can issue me the temporary certificate so ano ibig sabihin on so basically since i finished my telecounseling i really need to send her my us visa copy so I have to wait until I have my visa on hand and so that's why on 21 of May I submitted all the remaining documents needed to obtain my certificate so number one I gave a copy of my US visa you can just scan it second is the um, petitioner's passport and the Bureau, Bureau of Immigration stamps that's when if your uh, petitioner visited you in the Philippines and then third is a proof of relationship so it's basically the same um, document that I have compiled the proof of relationship when we submitted our K1 application first so the three um, the three files are all in the same word file and then I just exported it into a PDF file para hindi lang gumalaw galaw yung mga pictures and then fourth is since again uh, my petitioner is active military I submitted his um, ERB if you if your petitioner is active duty you would know what an ERB is so technically it would show that his from the army and all the related information would show there his rank and all of that so he can just you can just ask that from your um, petitioner and then fifth is my proof of um, residence so sorry that's not my the proof of my residence but his proof of residence it could be any billing statement so during that time my um, my petitioner is still inside or living in the barracks so any proof of residence like for example he got his car and um, the car insurance or any billing statement would show that he's living there it would just make sure that I guess he's alive and well no but kidding aside um, it would just make sure that you know it would coincide with like the ERB or where he is and all of like the story of your relationship would mean to them that you know it's genuine and real and just to match all the information that you've given to them so you don't have to be scared about that but any billing statement or proof of residence or where he is right now and then additionally um, she also attached she also asked for specific details like the contact information so my full name my address and my contact number so 
you have to make sure with this um, important thing and what I've learned from my facilitator which is really nice and she wants to make sure that everything goes well in terms of the address that should be your permanent address meaning if nagbo boarding house kayo in Manila or somewhere else um, in the Philippines and that's not your permanent address make sure to put your permanent address not your temporary address like for example if aalis na kayo um, to the states and obviously you're not going to live in your boarding house or your apartment that shouldn't be the address why because since this is just a temporary certificate they will be sending the original certificate to your house or residence so once you pay that as well it would indicate in the email that you can't change the address so make sure that it's your permanent address and that it can be delivered to that um, and then for the contact number you may put your or place your um, anyone that's here in the Philippines not the number that you've been using because obviously and that number cannot be reached already so why is this important because the it's just a temporary certificate and given if you want to come back to the Philippines and you're still not a US citizen or you're not a green card holder, you have to show the certificate, I mean the sticker or certificate again. And since this is just a temporary one that they're issuing online, if you don't have it or it's not delivered in your address and you're back in the Philippines and you need to fly out again, you have to get it again. So just to save your time, money, and effort. And then uh, also include the, the petitioner's full name and my petitioner's address and then the contact number. So after that, um, these are the specific details that's going to happen. All right, so after I sent out um, all the remaining documents on May 23rd, my CFO facilitator acknowledged and evaluated all the documents and she said that it's all complete and there's no additional document that she would ask from me. Why am I saying this? Because additional requirements might be asked apart from the list that they have sent. So, for example, after new Magdalik, um, after Satali counseling, it really depends on your counselor. So, I've read um, some people ask more than documents. So, it really um, depends on the counselor since each and every one of us has different you know cases so i mean it's very straightforward and i guess like that um one specific thing is that since she knows and i've mentioned that um his military so that's why there's a specific document from the military so again it's not black and white it really depends on your counselor and the specific case that you have after um she evaluates and listens to you through the telecounseling um and then after that since she acknowledged it um, and said it's already completed, she said or mentioned in the email that CFO will send an email to continue my registration. What does that mean? To continue, which means you can already proceed to pay for the certificate. So you can pay in two options, the Bayad Center and then GCash. All right, so in my case, since it's very convenient for me to use GCash, I used GCash and I paid on the same day after receiving her email. And then, so, pag nag email, so she will prompt the CFO um, tech, and it's another email not coming from her to continue with your registration. So click nyo yung yun, and then just follow all the instructions given. And then it would also say kung buy a center or to GCash, you would know how to pay because the instructions are really given there. And so I did that on May 23 and then on May 24 at around 1 a.m. So they already confirmed my payment and then received my certificate, uh, temporary certificate sent through my email. So overall, that was the entire process of my CFO telecounseling. And that is how, how you will schedule your CFO telecounseling. That's it for how you would like to get or book your telecounseling. Uh, again, I would put a disclaimer here. My case would be very straightforward and it all happened too fast. But some others or you might hear stories that are different. 
may ibang facilitator who's asking for more. But then again, I can't speak in behalf of that because it depends on your facilitator and the case that you have. But overall, I would advise you because it's okay again to get your CFO certificate or your te I'm sorry, your telecounseling way ahead, even if um, you're not yet visa on hand. So for others, I've read if in NVC, you I mean, if your case would say on the website na your case is ready and you can get a screenshot of that, you can already apply for your CFO certificate. And in my case, I just wanted to be really sure. So that's why I waited for my interview. And so, pala hindi siya, you know, it's not too long, it's not too short. So after that, after I did my interview, that's when I book and reach out for CFO, to a CF, to the CFO to book um, an appointment for telecounseling. Uh, and then overall, that's just how you do it. It's very straightforward, yung process. Again, it would just really depend on your facilitator. And so that's it for my video um, today. And watch out for my next video because overall, I will be explaining the entire timeline. So from 2020, when we filed for the petition and then until the visa on hand on 2021 and um, traveling to the States. And so that's from filing petition, sorry, filing petition to uh, my point of entry. Um, I will also try my best to attach overall magkano yung gastos for yung straightforward na gastos lang from the application down to um, my point of entry. And so I hope you find this useful and I hope you continue supporting my videos. Again, thank you so much everyone for tuning in and I'll see you in my next videos. Bye! Mm -hmm.